Welcome everyone. Uh, today is Wednesday, February 20th. This is the Aperio Teaching and Learning Call and thanks for joining this morning. Um, we're going to get started with a couple, well, we'll invite announcements and I can see that, um, Wilma, you've got one in here. Yep. Um, Sakai 19 release candidate one was um, came out last week. So um, that's the first release candidate. It's um, in QA as we speak and um, there may be um, two, possibly three release candidates before we have the general release. Um, but it means that we're getting close to the end of the tunnel here. <laughs> so, um, cool. so you can expect a lot of QA activity happening right now. And then hopefully we'll have a 19.0 um, a out uh, within the next several weeks. So, um, yeah. so you can look forward to that. Um, also, um, Sakai 12.6. There were a number of, of patches and improvements that came out, um, security things for uh, for the, the 12 branch. Um, so there has been a 12.6 that's been cut and um, and we're actually just waiting on feedback from, from you guys today on one outstanding item. It was brought up at um, core team, um, came up in QA. Uh, we wanted to get some teaching and learning feedback on whether this one item needs to be reverted or disabled in the UI before we actually release 12.6. So um, pending today's conversation, that'll give us some direction on that. But 12.6 will hopefully be out, if not this week, then um, very shortly thereafter. Um, otherwise, it would be ready to go today if it wasn't for that one item. So well, um, yeah. Wonderful. I think Laura Sierra has just joined and she had an announcement about um, a gradebook enhancement survey. Laura, you want to come on the mic and tell us about that? Can you hear me? Yeah. Great, great. Thank you, Tricia. Um, as we continue to sew up some loose ends on the now not so new community gradebook, we've come to a point where we would like to make some enhancements that will take it uh, will take a little more than the usual developer hours to complete. We have a few institutions standing by with interest and funds that they're willing to pour into these enhancements, but we need your help. I've collected the top five gradebook enhancements or fixes that have the most votes in JIRA. As you know, all the JIRA bugs and enhancement things, you can vote on them there. Um, they have the most votes and they have the most active community conversation going on around them. And I've sent out a survey to everyone. Uh, in fact, it went out about an hour ago asking our community to help prioritize these enhancements. So if you see the survey come across your inbox today, um, or if we could post uh, the link here in the chat, yeah. um, thank you. We would appreciate it if you just take a moment to take the survey. It's truly quick, um, but it'll help us focus our efforts on the next significant phase of the gradebook's development. And then if I can put in a plug, if the survey kind of piques your interest for more on what we as a community are doing to make Sakai better, and I think most people on this call are pretty involved with it, but if you're not, um, use that gradebook filter that I included in the survey to start poking around in JIRA. Uh, we encourage you to find a tool or a workflow that your faculty or your institution uses regularly um, and help us make it better by commenting on these JIRAs, reporting on issues you see in community code, helping us test them, or dedicating some time to some of our release testing because there's weekly opportunities to be involved in just about every way that you can imagine. So that's my quick plug. Take the survey. It'll just take like two minutes. And thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Laura. Um, it, would you paste the link to the survey in the chat and then I'll also put it in the etherpad? Or you can. Yes. Either way. Yep, I'll, I'll zap it in there. Awesome. Thank you. So we're going to do a little flip flop. Um, normally we would talk about any JIRAs that have come up, but we have so many that's probably going to be most of our discussion today. And so I'm going to invite Wilma and Earl. I don't think Earl is on the call yet, though. Um, yeah, I just pinged him. He said he would make it, so hopefully he'll be dropping in shortly. But okay. I can... well, if you want to wait for him, we could talk about a Jira or two before he arrives. Uh, let me or see if do you want to go ahead. Um. Let's. Uh... Let's go ahead and, and talk about uh, 
the first JIRA, and then okay. we'll see if he, he pops in uh, okay. while that's happening. That, 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 that works great. Okay. So Laura Geckler, you submitted a JIRA, it's back 41314, and it's about forums grading and allowing comments only to be sent to the gradebook. Do you want to fill us in on this one? Oh, is Laura Geckler on the call? She is, but she looks like she doesn't have a mic enabled. Yeah, she's having, she's having trouble with her mic right now. Okay, so we will skip that one until Laura can get the mic working. And so Wilma, the next one is one that you uh, submitted. It's SAC 33109. I'll paste that in the um, chat. And this is determining right. desired behavior. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, that's the one that we're actually um, interested in getting some feedback from this group um, pending the 12.6 the release. It is in the 12.6 branch currently, um, so it's part of that version. But during QA, um, there were some questions that came up. The QA folks couldn't figure out if it was actually working as designed or not, or as desired. Um, and there was a feeling that it might actually be a little confusing to the end user because of the way um, that the points are showing up. Um, the, the, the issue is about displaying the total points for, for categories. So folks that are using um, points-based based grade books, they wanted to be able to see the to total points per category as well as the total points for the course grade. Um, the problem is that if you have weighted categories, the total points don't really reflect the course grade because it's it's not a weighted um, calculation. It's just a straight points calculation. So um, so the, the it's there's an inconsistency in the way that the points show up um, if you have great or weighted categories or non weighted categories. And so I think there was some confusion from the the testers as to why it wasn't showing up under the course grade and um, because there were so many questions about how this should best be represented, we weren't sure if it was ready for prime time to be included in the 12.6 release or if it still needed a little more fine tuning before um, it actually is, is in the, the code. So, um, so that's kind of the, the gist of it. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if, if anybody else that was on the, the core team call or, or one of the um, QA calls um, would like to add anything to that. I can talk about it a little bit. Um, it, I think what gets really confusing is when you start looking at the screenshots that have been provided. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Because we're kind of, we feel like, where is our guide here? What are we shooting for? Um, because kind of what you see early on and then what you see a little bit later are, are inconsistent. I mean, even if we're talking about not showing points for weighted categories, which makes sense, um, and especially in, when you're talking about the final grade, um, even in this last screenshot on 12X for, that Christina Schweiber um, provided, we still have points listed even in the categories with the percentages. Um, so, you know, even that's maybe a little inconsistent. So I think the question was, I mean, I think what you see when you start reading through the comments of people who have tested this, they're not sure what we, what it should be. Um, so if I feel like there was enough question around that, that it just wasn't ready. And we need to talk about it more to make sure that we're, um, at the very least, if we, if whatever it is, we know what we're testing and we made an intentional choice about this. Yeah, that's always a good thing to do. Um. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know what we as as Gradebook 2 users are trying to accomplish um, is to get that screen back that our faculty relied on so much when they were originally setting up their Gradebook that just simply shows how many points are being accounted for. Um, one of the screenshots is directly out of Gradebook 2. It does show weighted categories. Um, and it shows how many points are accounted for in the category, just simply as, you know, a shopping list. It doesn't, it, of course, that gradebook also said, okay, so if you have these five things in a weighted category, 
each one is contributing 5% to the, you know, it actually did some of that math for you. To, but we don't have any one place in the new grade book that'll show um, a very convenient list of all, a laundry list of everything that you've got in the grade book and what it's contributing overall. So maybe, and I think this is a point well taken, maybe this isn't some more numbers that we toss into the spreadsheet interface. You know, maybe this needs to be hidden away in a, another button somewhere. Yeah, and we talked about that, Laura. Um, yeah. We talked about that uh, on the core team call, and because I made this case as well, that we, Duke has never used Gradebook 2. But I think one of the things that people liked about Classic and what we found as they were continuing to use it is they wanted that view. Because you could see just your item view. Yes. Um, it wasn't like this. It wasn't quite like this. It wasn't quite this good. Um, but I think that that's what people kind of wanted. What's the yes. high level of my grade book? Where are all of my items? How much are they worth? Is everything accounted for? I, have I set everything up right? And right, then I'll exactly. get grading. So I yeah. totally get that. And what we talked about yesterday was the possibility of, we threw around a bunch of ideas, um, but because we have a list of our items under the button item order, which would need yes. to be labeled, that yes. there was potentially an opportunity yes. to add the points there and rename that label, kind of maybe make it more like sites where you have a list of your items and you can view them, but you could also rearrange them. I agree. That's There's great, actually yeah. a related year. I pasted it in there. I, I had the wrong thing on my clipboard the first time. Second link is the one you want. It's um, SAK 4129. That's um, actually talking about the same thing. Um, cool. It's that item order screen and adding that info there. And by the and way, this is one of the things on the JIRA list uh, that on the gradebook enhancement survey. Great, great, because so. Duke, Duke's really interested in that. We've had a couple conversations about it re recently. Um, but um, I guess what I was going to say is, um, you know, that that is kind of a separate, I think my final conclusion after we had multiple conversations about this is that that feature, having that view, is separate than how we are going to display the points for weighted categories on the spreadsheet, though. So I think we know we want that view, and that, that's kind of a separate JIRA. I still think that the, we can focus our decision right now on this specific thing, which is how do we want to display points um, in the spreadsheet view when we have just categories or weight categories and weighting? Um, what is what is our decision around that? Because I think that's what this specific JIRA is, is about, or we can make it about. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think um, that item view is is definitely a separate thing, and it's good that there's already an existing JIRA for that. Yeah. But this issue is just in the spreadsheet. You know, is it okay the way that it's currently behaving, or is that something that we need to, to you know, revert or hide for this release until it's ready to go? So if I may jump in as a as a institution that was a former Gradebook two user, um, certainly faculty were kind of disappointed when they couldn't see those total points anymore. Um, I think, and 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 it always showed the total points for using weighted categories, and I think people knew just to kind of ignore those if they were using weighted categories. Um, so I'm not sure if there's a super strong need to, to change the way it displays between whether categories are weighted or not. Um, and the, the other thing that, that just kind of popped into my head might be that um, one way to kind of warn people would be to, to put in some, just some informational text on the settings page where if you choose categories and weighting, it says something about note that the total points may not mean anything. I don't know what the language would be, but something like that. <laughs> I'm not sure for what, what want to say that. <laughs> for, for, for whatever that's worth. Yeah. I mean, I think that that was another question that came up as well is, is this, we, we think it's gonna be confusing to users, but I mean, I, faculty have been using weighted categories for a long time um, uh, that I've, my, in my experience, and I, I don't, I, I, I'm not saying we shouldn't make it clear, I'm just saying that, um, you know, maybe 
maybe there's just an opportunity to um, provide yeah, one, that clarity question, in a lightweight way. One question that is worth asking is whether, you know, if, if it is a feature that's being discussed or, you know, a bug or whatever you want to call it in this case, um, that's been around for a long time and the, and the ticket did not come directly from, uh, you know, customer service or someone who's interacting with users daily because they're hearing, you know, quote, so many user complaints about this, then it may not be worth fixing because people may just understand, um, just like um, the last person said, I'm sorry, I missed your, your name, but, um, you know, they, it may be that, that users just get it um, and they don't need any further reminder. Terry says it's worth fixing. I'm just mentioning this in the chat. Yeah. Um, uh, what about if you put the total points of the items in the column header instead of in the uh, category average column? Because I think in the category average column, it is confusing. Uh, that where it's shown in this in this screenshot um, mock-up is putting it in the category average. And in fact, I think in later versions of Gradebook, it actually says instead of like where they're putting total here, I think it actually says category average, uh, which makes sense to me to indicate to the user what that column is. Uh, obviously, if group by category is not selected, the column headers or the category headers do not exist. Um, however, I think it would be reasonable to put the total points for the category up in that category header. And if somebody really wants to see it, they can turn on category groupings. We also discussed the possibility of just making a checkbox of whether you see that or not. Um, if you want to see the total points, there's a checkbox that says display these, regardless if it's weighted or not. Um, that I don't think would be helpful because to me that would say that it would show the total points for the entire gradebook as if everything were equally weighted. If you're saying show the total points regardless of weighting, then I would assume that would be a raw total of the entire gradebook. Right, that's why it doesn't currently display that. Right, right. that's why it doesn't. Yeah. So I, I think that wouldn't make sense to have a checkbox to show that. Um, and that's why I was suggesting to put it up in the category heading instead of in the column that shows the category average, because that's still an average of all of those values. Uh, or you could put it in that same category where it currently says in this screenshot total 333, you could put total the number of points divided by 333. And then the category average is underneath that, which shows exactly that number, just like if you're showing in the course grade screen in a points grade, in a, in a non-weighted grade book, you sh can show the grade in the course grade screen indicating the, uh, the points and then the percentage. Yeah, that makes sense. I volunteered Tiffany to write that up in JIRA. <laughs> I'll do it. Yeah. Thank you, Tiffany. <laughs> yeah, if you could just comment on that existing JIRA, the 33109. Um, I think, though, that it probably needs to stay in the cell and not in the header, just because the headers yep. were, were reduced in size. They're actually quite small in 12.6. Uh, in mm -hmm. So you'd have to make that big again to put any. Um, yeah, I think it would make step. sense to make it mirror the behavior of the uh, course grade column in a non-weighted grade book. Yeah. All right, so if we've re reached a resolution on that, I'm gonna keep us moving because we're, we've got a lot to cover today. Yeah. So, um, so moving on to the centralized grade book, I see Aurela has joined us. So um, we can go ahead and, and spend a few minutes on that. Keep an eye on the clock, make sure that we don't go over um, 20 minutes at most. Although if we use less, we can spend more time on the remaining JIRAs. Um, so the centralized gradebook, and let me um, put a link 
here to a concept doc. I shared this at Sakai camp, so if you were at camp, you've seen it before. I've not had a chance to make any revisions to it, so this is still kind of the first draft. Um, and basically what this is, is a, an attempt to kind of collate some of the discussions that have been happening in different places in the community about a centralized grading service. Um, and this was actually also one of the things that the um, Sakai Virtual Conference planning group had, had sort of designated as where they wanted the conference money to go for this um, past uh, conference. So we have about $11,000 that we're going to put toward this uh, to get the project going. It'll probably take more than that. It's going to have to be done in, in sort of phases. And, um, and what this concept doc does is, is attempt to kind of lay it out as a big picture sort of thing. So essentially right now um, in the grade book, uh, what you have is uh, you have items that are, can be created and graded right directly in the grade book, or you have items coming from other tools that are sent to the grade book. And so the, the things that are coming to the grade book from other tools, like assignments or tests and quizzes or lessons, um, those tools all have this grading logic kind of baked in and and they're sending the score to the gradebook um, but when that happens you have kind of the opportunity for inconsistencies and sometimes it, there's clashes with the way that you know the gradebook is displaying it versus the way the tool calculated it so it just kind of opens the doors for a lot of problems plus from the from the end user perspective it's inconsistent you can't uh, you don't always have the same interface you can't um, get to an assignment grade from the gradebook. You have to go back to the assignment to get to the grading interface from there. Um, so there's a lot of kind of quirks that you sort of have to learn um, before you can uh, work with those scores in an efficient way. And so what we'd like to do is create a centralized grading service, which would be a service that all tools would use. It would be one service that handles all of the scoring, all the calculation, and all of the, the storage of those scores. So that anytime a tool is um, you know, grading something, it calls on this service. And that service is sort of the authoritative source for those scores. Now, all the tools, including the gradebook, would use this same service so that there wouldn't be any inconsistency in the way the grade is calculated. Um, and also, uh, the interface for grading would be consistent no matter which tool you go into and you could get to it from anywhere because anywhere that's calling grade you know grading it would be using that same piece of code so the proposed solution is sort of in two parts the two major components would be grade storage which is kind of setting up the infrastructure to um, you know use all the the tables to avoid you know significant migrations and we don't want to make it hard for people to, to migrate from earlier versions so we want to keep that as consistent as possible and we want to store all the grades in one place in the database um, and then the second part, which would take a little bit more finessing, I think, and more input from end users is uh, developing the grading interface such that it's um, a, a consistent, pleasing interface that, that would uh, give you all the types of grading that you would need um, to be able to do. And what we were thinking is maybe something along the lines of like a speed grader type UI with features like document preview and rubric integration. Um, you know, maybe even, I, I know I've heard some talk in, in different threads about, you know, being able to post a letter grade as opposed to just a numeric score. So things like that could all be kind of part of that grading interface um, and again it would return a valid grade that could be used in any tool that does grading and anytime you go to grade something you get this same familiar interface um, so that's kind of the, the the big idea um, once once those two pieces are done then obviously each tool would need to be modified to um, to use that new service. So the service would be built, and then you know, and then assignments would be modified to use it, and forums would be modified to use it, and and so forth. Um, so I don't know, uh, Earl, if you want to add anything before we start taking questions. 
I know. I think, Wilma, I think you did a great job explaining basically the, the high level goals. So, you know, that's, uh, I think um, the only thing I would add is that um, probably is that the interface that we're to, that you were mentioning, um, we would, um, it would be similar. We were thinking that we would do it with a web component. And so um, that this could then be inserted into any tool and the tool doesn't actually need to have, let's say, any specific logic, you know, specific to the tool to know that it's there. Um, that's kind of gives us that ability to do that, um, similar to how, you know, Rubrics kind of has that ability. Um, so this is like new technology, new stuff that we're, you know, we're, you know, using and, um, you know, uh, to advance, you know, what we have. The, 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 probably the, the, you mentioned a little bit, the, uh, one of the parts is removing the logic from all the tools around the grading. Right. And so that's that's probably so, again, that's like that second phase that you mentioned. And um, that's, you know, definitely part of that. And part of doing that is sim is is to simplify those tools. Right. To say, listen, you don't need to do you know, you don't need to do your own grading. All you need to do is say that you need to have something that is graded and then go to this central service to have that done. And so, and that gives us a lot of consistency throughout Sakai so that the tools are, uh, we don't have individual tools with different grading logic. That's, that's the whole con, that's one of the, you know, core concepts of, of this change is to remove that from tools because uh, there's been so many times where we fix a bug, let's say around grading and assignments, but then it's also there in some other tool because it was never fixed in that tool. And so fixing, for example, an issue in a centralized way means once you fix it there, it's fixed everywhere. <laughs> you know, as long as, you know, everybody's using this grading, this centralized grading service. So that's, um, there's a lot of win-wins with this, uh, this type of uh, um, project. Yeah, and I see a lot of questions in the, the chat. Let me address a few of those. Um, Dave asks if if we're kind of upending NYU's work, and, and the answer is no. We, we definitely don't want to um, reinvent what NYU has already done. Um, obviously, they've done a lot of really great work with the gradebook, and there's a lot of continual enhancements to the gradebook. We're not proposing rewriting the gradebook. No, the gradebook stays the same. Yeah, you know, we're just doing it. This is just the service that feeds the gradebook. Correct. Exactly. And then what we are talking about from a UI perspective, so the big UI changes would be, um, or let's say front end changes would be um, removing, gr um, removing the grading that's in, let's say, some of the existing tools, right? Um, and replacing that with a more common grading. Now, Tiffany mentioned like in Samago where there's different grades for like different questions and, and things like that. That stuff will still exist in Samago, right? We're talking about the final grade, like the final, um, you know, the final, uh, um, the final, uh, you know, score that the user had from that assessment, you know, and, and where that gets stored, you know. Um, the, the Samago should not be storing for example, this final grade in its own tables, it should be storing it in the central service. And that's, that's what we're, that's what we're talking about here. Right. And you'll still have the spreadsheet grade entry in gradebook, but any tool that has its own interface for grading stuff, like assignments or tests and quizzes or, or anytime you, you click on a grade link and a screen pops up for you to grade in, um, we want that interface to be consistent throughout so that the, the interface that comes up is the same interface that you use in other places. Um, it might look, you might have different options depending on what it is that you're grading, but, um, but we want that, that same interface um, to be the one that you use in assignments or tests and quizzes or forums and, and give you all the same capabilities um, that you would want to have in a grading UI. Um, I know there are more questions in the chat, but I just wanted to pop in here, Earl, and ask you a couple of things. When uh, you had mentioned a, a grading service at Sakai Camp, I immediately imagined 
you know, that meaning possibly many different things, um, up to and including what you've just described. But I'm wondering if implied in this is also like um, a an API. Are you going to build, is there going to be a changed grading API or a new API to support just this component? Or um, is, is that not a planned part of, of this build out? So the so so as part of the grading service, there would be um, some work done to support the existing API that that exists now. That, for example, the gradebook service is using. Right? Um, we probably will somewhat simplify it because there is this. Um, there 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 are some. It, it it's not a really clean API. Let's say so we might clean it up a little bit, but for the most part, that stays the same. What we would be adding would probably be a JSON REST um, um, uh, endpoint so that um, um, we could then, this is what the web components would be using, for example, to, um, uh, to be able to, for example, stick this web component in different tools that would perform the grading there. Right. And so um, there would be a JSON endpoint that is kind of added. We kind of do have one already. So I don't want to say that there isn't one. Right. Um, but I think this would be a little more, uh, you know, formal to the, um, uh, um, it would be in addition to support the web component um, uh, gotcha. infrastructure that we we're talking about doing. Yeah. And, then, and, and then there might be some additional. Um, API connections that we add um, to support things like, you know, easier sending of grades back to the SIS and, and things like that. Right. And then just another another real quick technical question also, the, then um, this web component, what will it sort of, how will it be embodied inside of Sakai? I mean, I know it'll be a web component, but it it's is it a, another tool or is it a new kind of thing? Like you said, Wilma, that rubrics kind of lives in this cross tool fashion. Is there a new kind of generalized entity or standard that we're going to adhere to in terms of how we develop these things that live across tools? Um, yeah, uh, so that's a good question. I mean, that's a good question, but I, I think that what will happen with that is, so as these web components begin to pop up, which they're, 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 they're starting to happen already, like polls has already got a web component. We've got a date picker one that's coming to standardize the date picker across every, um, you know, everywhere in Sakai. Um, we've got a web component probably coming to standardize CK editor across all of Sakai and to support like multiple modes of different CK. This is all kind of future stuff that we've been talking about. Right. And so all of this stuff is based around um, web components, right? And as part of doing that, we need to also have a common way to create these web components and where they live and, and all this kind of stuff. So right. some of all of that is uh, going to be fleshed out here um, in the in the future. It pro will probably won't be uh, connected to this project. It'll probably be something that happens um, prior to this, actually, um, where some of that stuff is actually laid out. And for example, to define some state, like all web components must extend, for example, this particular thing. So that, for example, we can inject Sakai specific stuff into the web components as needed too, you know, to kind of give, a, you know, whatever the commonality, common stuff that all web components might need to have, for example. Yeah, um, I was just thinking it might be a good thing to, to name that, um, you know, in, it's, it's, a, it's a super kind of a super set of web components to call it a a Sakai system component or something like that. Because it, it, mm -hmm. you know, it reminds me of things you would find in an operating system. Like every time you open a file, there's the same dialogue to open a file. And you right. know, generally these are called you know, OS level components yeah. or system components or something like that. Yeah. Um, that would indicate more than just that they are, they are implemented as web components, but they have this particular use and profile inside of Sakai. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and all of this stuff follows along this uh, kind of this concept that's being that's being pushed forward of reusable components within Sakai. So any place that in Sakai where you see some like where you see an interface or you see something that is like, oh, well, you know, something similar is like that over in, in another tool, you know, for example, right? Like to give an example, like the permission, right? Permissions widget that we have, right? 
that should be a web component. The date picker. How many places is a date picker used in Sakai? That should be a web component. How many places is CK Editor used in Sakai? So all these things are reusable, uh, fall under the concept of reusable components. And we're you and our okay. strategy is to use web components to deliver those down. Okay. So this is starting to veer off into more of a technical discussion. And yeah, sorry. Sort of, that's okay. It's it's not a problem. Just wanna I'm all done. left and I just wanna make sure that I love this meeting too, Dave. Um, <laughs> it's a great <laughs> meeting. <laughs> Uh, we have a chance to respond to other questions um, more from the teaching and learning side of this. So, um, yeah, and just to reassure the folks that are worried about the the um, usability of the UI, I mean that has yet to be determined. Sure. But we certainly don't want to take a step backward. In, in fact, we want to make it better Absolutely. than it is now. So, no, we're not going to put little comment bubbles that are obnoxious. Um, because they're obnoxious. <laughs> I mean, the reason that there are comment bubbles in the spreadsheet is because it's a spreadsheet, you know, and there's limited space. But if you're grading assignments, obviously, you want to have a little more elbow room. So, um, so there might be adjustments to the interface depending on where you access it from, and it's still kind of all feeding into that same central service. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but the, the, I think the big thing to take that is of interest to this group is that the standardization of like the grading across the tools and things like that is going to be really great. You know, the, the ability, for example, to be in assignments, see a common grading UI. And then when you're, for example, in lessons, you see the exact same grading UI there. Right. And, um, and then all the grades and all the grades end up in the same place and, we kind of get things, uh, you know, a little more standardized and get some consistency across, um, you know, across all the tools. And that's that's the main one of the biggest wins out of doing stuff like this. Absolutely. It also makes testing a lot easier because mm -hmm. you're you're QAing one service as opposed to grading in five, six different tools <laughs> that yeah. all do it in their own way. It's um, a really good point. You grade like literally grading in one tool is almost doing the same test as if you were doing the grading in another tool. Um, I, I would say it'd be, be like somewhat along the lines of 90 for 95 percent the same, you know, so. Versus where now, like what Wilma's saying, where you go into an assignment tool and the grading is is completely its own. It's its own, you know, and then you go into, uh, you know, Samago and it's completely its own. And same thing with lessons, you know, so, uh, you know, uh, that's the problem that we're trying to solve, right, is that all these different things have do some of the same things and um, they're they're inconsistent with each other. So I'm going to invite folks to go to that proposals document that uh, I just pasted the link again a moment ago and uh, comment there. I think that's what we're looking for, right, Wilma and Earl? Yes, absolutely. Um, we're going to be revising this. Like I said, this was just a first draft just to kind of get some of the big concepts down, but we're definitely going to be fine tuning it and adding more detail. Um, so please, you know, comment on that document, um, any areas that you'd like to, um, you know, express a, a desire for, you know, something that's important to your stakeholders or, um, you know, anything that you think is missing. Um, obviously, this is a, it's supposed to be a fairly brief overview, so we're not going to get into the nitty gritty of the actual, you know, technical design in this document. Um, there will be other opportunities to influence, you know, the UI and the, the way that the technical pieces all work. Um, so we don't want to get too far into the weeds, but um, any major concerns, please um, post them here and we'll be having, you know, follow up discussions as this whole thing evolves. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, do, do you have any timeline in mind for this work? I'd like to get started on the, the first part, the grade storage piece, um, fairly quickly, um, probably over the next couple of months. I don't know if it'll be in for 20 or not, um, maybe in a 
very preliminary state. I think the grading UI is going to take a little bit longer, um, but I don't right now have a sense of the timeline on that. I don't know, Earl, if you want to add anything. Um, no, I, I, I mean, I don't, I, we, you know, we've got uh, a number of projects going on and I don't know, you know, which, uh, you know, sort of, you know, it's kind of hard to tell right now what, uh, when, you know, you know, when something like this will be ready or when we begin, um, you know, but the yeah. first things first. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. yeah, I, I, I would, sorry. I, I would just make the note that I think calling it the grading service is a is a bit confusing just because I do, and maybe this is only a problem that an engineer would have, but when I hear a service, I do think of either um, a, you know, a Java API or Java service, or I think of a RESTful service, but I don't necessarily think of, and that's incorporated in this, as Earl said, but it's more than that. It's actually a new piece of the UI. And so I think it's worth it, calling it something that um, makes that clear. Yeah, I'm sorry if my if our naming of it wasn't like we could have some you know some cool name for it. Sure, like uh, <laughs> like the skin had Morpheus and Trinity and you know and Neo and yeah. all that stuff, right? I'm I'm sure you guys can come up with something good. <laughs> I think the logic on the back end is the uh, biggest piece of it. So for me, service does fit that. Uh, it's it's serving up the the grade logic for for displaying wherever grades need to be displayed, like the grade book. Maybe it should be called some other kind of service. <laughs> Chameleon, I like it. Well we'll all ponder that. Ooh, yeah. I got an idea. A cool you know how, you know how but we've been talking move on. Sorry. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. We really do need to move on if we want to cover some of these JIRAs before we run out of time. And your JIRA, Laura, on the forums grading is up next. Do you want to talk, talk to us about that? Oh, let me see where we are in our... It's uh, SAC 41314. And I will paste that into the chat. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is, so as most of you know, I've, I've been working on consistency across different methods for copying stuff. And so this question came up with forums grading um, along with the whole consistency thing. Uh, Derek put this in as a as a feature request that um, some people have asked for the ability to add a comment comment when grading um, a student contribution to a forum topic, and it just struck me as strange. To me, a uh, uh, forum topic is going to be either something that's graded uh, so to to give that gravitas with your students this is mandatory you must do this and it's got to be a certain quality so have at it then i'm going to give you grade or it's not graded and um, i may uh, as the instructor write a reply on their on their forum topic post uh, which will be my comment so i i don't know what to do with this um, feature request here, which is requesting we don't want to grade them and we don't want to reply to their topic. We we just want to comment, like like a grade mm -hmm. book grade comment. So personally, it like personally I'm thinking it probably shouldn't be done. Yeah, I wonder. It sounds mm. like that instructors in this case are looking for a way to privately comment to a student, but I don't think the gradebook needs to be involved, frankly. But can't you already can't, can't you already sort of do that by way of the forum anyways? Because you can you can email the the, the student directly right from the the discussion form area. Oh, there you no. Go. The the problem is they want it in line. Um, I've I brought this up with the forums discussion group um, 
before because one of our users actually asked for this, uh, an option to have a checkbox where the student can check this box private to instructor or the instructor can check this box to make private to the student. And only the individual users who have permission to view that, in this case, the student when the instructors post it, student and instructors, you know, um, they're the only ones who see that. So that way the instructor's comments about the student's post are provided within the context of the student's post, but the other students cannot see it. So that's an, uh, a variation on this theme, which to Trisha's point does not involve the grade book. Correct, does not involve the grade book. Um, now some, instructors have wanted an option to include the comments in line with the grade. Uh, that's a different situation where it would be sent to the grade book, but it would also have an interface to view within uh, forums, which it currently does not because all forums grading currently takes place directly within the grade book. All of those windows within forums where you enter grades are actually just performing in the grade book. It's just sort of a view to the grade book. Well, I know we like to take every, uh, every suggestion um, seriously and cons with consideration, uh, but it would be my recommendation to just kill this feature request. Maybe, <laughs> maybe write another one. Um, as Tiffany has suggested, but let's just kill this one. I just wanted to say there is a workaround for this. You could use Postum to um, provide comments back to students that so that way it's not going through email. It would just um, <clears throat> still be within the Sakai platform, um, but it would be outside of the gradebook. And I'm sitting here wondering if there's any capacity with forums and messages, which are kind of a package deal, to work together when private comments need to be made. Well, I think the major problem is that you can't do it in line. So wherever you're doing it, if you're putting it in messages, if you're putting it in uh, a spreadsheet and uploading it to post them, if you're putting it in gradebook, no matter what, the student has to go somewhere else, or the email, has to go somewhere else to view those comments. And the instructor does not have immediate access to them in context either. Um, the, the real That's problem is like not your in idea. context. <clears throat> That's why I like your idea of a checkbox where you get to say something privately to the student, or they get to say something privately to you. I, um, I, I agree with Laura that this particular Jira, the way it's been written to send comments to the grade book should be killed. Personally, I, that's what I think. Um, and a new Jira created to, you know, enhance forums to allow this functionality. Yeah. I'm fairly I'm certain we... People agree with that. Fairly certain we have a JIRA for this already. I will look in the forums JIRAs. There's a parent for all of the forums improvements. Um, oh, well, if we could point to that JIRA from this one when, when it gets killed by Laura Geckler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm writing a comment in it right now. Um, perhaps we could have, I'm since I'm writing it, I can't see the chat. Um, is there a, any voting going on? Uh, most people are agreeing that it's a forums issue, it looks to me. Not, it, it shouldn't involve the grade book. But I, here, I says Charles Bristow. <laughs> and rest in peace, says Matt Burgess. Well, it sounds uh, like 41314 is actually a bug thing because as far as I know, you can currently uh, at least in, in our instance of 11.2 or whatever we have, um, you can currently just send a comment to the grade book from forums and not enter a grade. So that sounds like a bug, not a uh, feature request. I wonder if that changed from 11 to 12. I assume it did. 
I guess so. Yeah, maybe so. Maybe we just need to comment on this JIRA um, with yeah. that with that to say we think this might be a regression. It was previously possible in mm -hmm. whatever version. I, so yeah, for sure. So maybe this just needs to be converted to a different JIRA type, JIRA type. Well, it doesn't answer um, what this group is determined is something people really have asked for is the ability to comment in the context of the original right. discussion. Right. Tiffany, you said yeah. your professor had requested that. Did you write up a feature request, Jira? I don't remember. I just posted the link to the forums UI improvements, uh, the main thing. I think I discussed it in the forums UI group. Um, and I, it doesn't look like I created JIRA for it yet, but I can definitely do that. That'd be great. And if you linked it to that parent JIRA, that'd be awesome because then it's captured. No, it shouldn't be linked. It should be a subtask. But well, that's, that's what I meant. <laughs> Associated yeah. with that, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, guys. We uh, have nine minutes left. So, and several JIRAs or pr potential features to discuss. So, I bet we only have time for one. And I'm going to lean on you, Wilma, to help us decide which one really needs to be um, discussed right now. Is Wilma still with us on the call? Oh, yeah, she is. She might be taking. She might her be on dog. puppy duty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anybody else? Um, I see with Jolie, you've submitted one. Laura Geckler, you've got another one. There were a couple from the core team, I think, that um, Wilma really wanted to talk about. Um, one having to do with including the student profile photo in assignments, and one to add the instructor's name to student view list and details on assignments. Um, Okay, pick one and go. Uh, well, I'm just going to pick you, Jolie. You have SAC 41018. Uh, this was whether or not a rubric association can be deleted after using it to assess a student. Yeah, when I first saw this, my concern was that student evaluations has, have been entered. I wasn't really thinking about the fact that we have our rubrics designed so they can be hidden from the user or from the student. Um, I was thinking about an assignment that had already been communicated to a student that this is how they would be evaluated and then you'd be changing that. Um, but considering that um, uh, a faculty member could choose not to show the rubric to the student, that kind of changes things because it's more of an internal kind of process on the faculty's part. Um, uh, Tiffany and I have already had a lot uh, of discussion on this on the JIRA itself, but the, the, what it's about is whether or not um, once a, a JIRA, um, I'm sorry, a rubric has been associated with an assignment and the instructor has already used that rubric to evaluate a student um, and that the evaluations are in there, if they can then change the association and say, I'm not going to use this rubric anymore. They can, right now, I think what um, Bedardo was trying to do is actually just change the radio button to the one above, which is no rubric is being used. And he was not able to do that. So I think it should be functionally possible, but it seemed to me that we'd want the, a larger community eyes on this for feedback. And I see a, a lot of comments between, uh, it looks like Tiffany and Jolie, you both have done a lot of comments and I have not read any of them um, and they're extensive, so. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if either one of you feels like you could summarize or maybe you just did, Jolie. I kind of did. I mean, I, I, I initially I was saying, no, we don't want to lose student grades and and um, you know, students already assumed that they're going to be evaluated this way. But again, like I was saying, I wasn't even thinking about the fact that maybe a student hasn't even seen the rubric. Maybe this is something the faculty said, I, 
student doesn't see this, I'm gonna use this rubric. Um, and then they realize maybe after they started grading the student that they had the wrong rubric associated and you know, that's a potential scenario where it would make sense to allow this. Um, so I, I think reality is it's not functionally possible right now. And my opinion, my latest opinion is that it should be functionally possible. Um, I mean, there could be really negative consequences for a student who's already, you know, submitted so, their assignment using a rubric if it's student facing, but that's a I know Dave, Dave part of it. So, Julie, would that would that be in the case then that uh, if if the the rubric was ignored or somehow deselected, unselected, unassociated, um, that uh, the score would be retained or would just disappear? I think that yeah. we're we need to weigh in on that. Um, I, I mean, I, Tiffany brought up a bunch of other scenarios where um you know an association was was lost but then so were the students scores and she was advocating for can we save that somehow and if we reassociated the rubric that we originally decided we weren't going to use but then decided we were going to use that the grades would still be there See, that that kind of so, gets messy to me really. yeah it does to me too but so, i mean especially from a qa standpoint Oh my God. <laughs> my, my argument was essentially what happens in assignments right now. If you associate an assignment to the gradebook, you can later disassociate that assignment from the gradebook. The grades are retained in assignments. Okay. You can now reassociate it to the gradebook, just like you can remove a quiz that's been sent to the gradebook. All the grades are retained. You can re add the quiz to the gradebook. I think the same thing should be true of rubrics. You should be able to associate it and disassociate it as needed from the grade item. Uh, if I'm an instructor who messes up, I associate the rubric to the wrong assignment. I go in, I start grading, I go, oops, I didn't mean to link it to this one. I meant to link it to the other one. Uh, I wanna be able to destroy that association and link it to the correct one without losing all the work I just did to grade the students. Mm -hmm. Because it's quite possible that I, linked the rubric to the wrong place, but I was grading the right thing, and my students knew what that rubric was going to be grading um, and entered that you know, in the appropriate place. Um, so for example, if I have an in-class assignment and I do in the assignments tool, uh, you know, the in-class, whatever they call that option, not a non-electronic assignment, I could associate a rubric to the wrong non-electronic assignment, and the students have handed in the, the right papers associated with that rubric and i'm grading with the right rubric the right things but then i realize oops i i associated the wrong thing um, and then you have to regrade and then you have right? to regrade right i don't want to have to do that i want to just pull it off that association and associate it to the right thing whoa how do but you do that i was because, wondering that too laura <laughs> but uh, tiffany there are say um there are an oral presentation and it, so it's non-electronic. It's an oral presentation. And in, in my grading of the students, I am uh, got five things I'm looking for. And each of those five things have a total of four points for an oral presentation that's 20. If I associate the wrong rubric to this thing, then I'm grading in the rubric. And I mean, I would notice that because I've got five things I'm looking for and some other rubric doesn't even have the right language in it. My point is that you can associate and disassociate everything else without losing data. And I think the same thing should be true here. Uh, it's, and, so and potentially, I think it's potentially it's the over. So it's um, it may be the same thing we were talking about earlier where there has to be a way to to uh, record a grade that's the final grade. So let's say I go through the wrong rubric and, uh, and the student ends up with 16 out of 20 points. It's only the 16 that's retained when I disassociate the rubric. I still would have to fill in a new rubric to come up with those 16 points. I, I don't understand why. The point is that it's a rubric that has been associated previously. It's now removed. The data is still there. All the grades are still there. The total score would, would still be there. And then I reassociate yeah. it. I mean, I, I don't see how that's. Yeah. 
Sorry. No, but I, it, I but if you we, if you reassociate with a different rubric, then the scores might not match up. You still have to rescore that. Yeah. Even if the total score was retained, that there's no way of of knowing how the old the the original rubric scores would map to the new rubric because the column well, I, I might thought, be different. But I thought the rubrics are internally separate from the the assignments, and then they they put their grade in, they inject their grade into whatever you've graded with them. Maybe I'm wrong about how rubrics function and, and that's what I don't understand. Um, so if because we're, we're actually out of time and I need to drop off to go to the UX call. Um, thank you everyone. Um, I don't know if you're gonna continue to discuss this, but I'm gonna drop off. Um, right. And good luck with your discussion if you continue. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'll be happy to join. If we want to continue this discussion next time, I'll be happy to join then to 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 be part of it. But could, I think we could and should do that because it looks like we have more to talk about. Yeah. Uh, what we room are we in for the UX call? We are in three. Three. Okay. See you there. Bye. Okay. Bye. 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 <laughs> we are adjourned. See you next time.